You're three minutes late. <sighs> Am I? Sorry, Edna. Have you been waiting long? Since ten to. I wanted to be first in. I've been up with him half the night, haven't I, Batley? Oh. Who's on this morning? Um, Paddy, I think. Well, I hope I'm not going to be kept waiting, because if I am, I shall have plenty to say on the matter. If there's one thing I can't abide, it's unpunctuality. There's no excuse for it in my book. Quite. No excuse at all. Why don't you give us a shout? Sorry, mate, I didn't think. How did last night go, then? I'd rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. Why? What happened? What happened was... I made a complete plunker in myself. Now, can we just change the subject, please? What did you go and do now? Nothing. Just got oh, me big gob, that's all. I should never listen to you in the first place. <laughs> What's it got to do with me? Well, you egged me on, made me think I had some sort of a chance. <laughs> Jason, you definitely do not know about women. So she gave you the brush off? <sighs> she just wants to be friends. That old line. Now, can we just change the subject? Right, I'll see you later, then. Haven't you forgotten something? What's that, then? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Mm. Oh, I wish you didn't always have to go away. I've got to work, Viv. I know, I'm just saying that's all. I miss you. Get away with you. I'll be back by tea time. Which makes a change. This is no life, is it? You always on the move, me stuck behind the counter. We never see each other. We've been through all this, Viv. I know. Viv, 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 I love you to death, but really I've got to get off now. Shut your mouth, give us a kiss. Mm. Love you. Love you. Ta ta for now. Be back around five. Honest. And you say he can't keep his food, though? Not since he had that dog food from Viv Hope shop, he can't. Oh, I should have known. It gave off a right whiff. <laughs> well, dogs tend to be pretty resilient to bacteria. Uh, well, I think to be on the safe side, he should have an X-ray. An X-ray? It's that bad, then, is it? Well, no, he might have swallowed something, but then... The, well, there might be an obstruction. But either way, I think it's best to have an X-ray. Then he must have one. The only problem is they can be a bit pricey and then nothing might show up. I want the very best money can buy, young man. This dog means everything to me. Right then, next where it is. I'll book him in with the vets in autumn. Don't you worry, my little precious. You have a little girl. I'd really like to call her Lola. Mm. Can't see Ashley going for that somehow. No, me neither. God, it's really hard thinking of babies' names. How did you pick my name? You. You were named after me French pen pal, weren't you? I must have told you that. Oh, what was she like? Oh, I never met her. Well, you didn't in them days. I didn't go abroad till I was in my 20s, and that was only to Guernsey. I had photos, though. Really? What did she look like? A big-looking lass. Quite... masculine, really. There was this one photo of her sat having her tea. No, you definitely wouldn't have called her pretty. Very big knees. She sounds delightful. Well, she was different, wasn't she? She was French for a start. And, oh, I don't know. It just seemed exotic to be French. Ooh la la, and all that. I thought, if I have a little girl, I'm going to call her Bernice. Oh. Anyway, Lola, can't you come up with something better than that? Something better than what? We were just talking about babies' names. Really? What is that? Um, no, no reason. Just saying it's a very hard thing to have to do. When you have to do it, that is. Hmm. Mum, you and your big gob. I'm sorry, love. Oh, managed to make an appearance then. Make mm. us a cup of coffee. I'm gasping in there. Yeah, in a minute. What are you looking at? Houses. Not much an offer, though. Mind you, they're cheap enough round here. <laughs> These prices wouldn't even get you a lock-up in London. Still, I suppose it is the North. You know, you ought to be thinking about getting yourself a job. That settlement won't last forever, you know. <laughs> it might at these prices. Look at this, there's one here for... <laughs> You're not going to believe this. 42,000. My extension costs more than that. 
How much did you get then, exactly? Enough. But you're right, kid. I should be thinking of getting some kind of return on that money. Because, uh, let's be honest, I definitely don't intend working for a living. I know what I'd do if I got your money. Oh, yeah, what's that, then? Start again. Somewhere fresh. Doesn't feel right being here, not with Bob. I mean, this is my old life, isn't it? I feel as if we should be, well, moving on. Maybe I should move on. Italy, perhaps. I don't even mind working. It's this place. It's really getting to me. I mean, my last husband died in that shop. It doesn't all go well now, does it? I'm surprised more people haven't died in that shop of sheer boredom. I mean, it's not exactly at the cutting edge now, is it? You should do something impulsive. Something life-changing. I know I would. Yeah. What? Hi. Hiya. Bye, then. Don't run off like that. <laughs> what? Anyway, I need you back at the surgery. I just popped out. The, um, she knew me at school. Uh, morning off. Look, about last night. I... Oh, I got the message loud and clear. I just... I feel a bit of a prat, that's all. I was just being honest, Paddy. Sorry. Do you mind if I ask you something? Sure. Why did you make me think that you like me? But I do like you. Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Inviting me round to dinner like that on my ex-wife's birthday. Sorry, Paddy, I didn't realise you were so provincial. Or gullible. Look, I'd have never have said what I said if... with you only giving me the... Come on, I'm just not like that. Ask anybody. Let me get this straight. You're saying the only reason I was nice to you was because I wanted to get into your knickers. Oh, come on, Paddy. No. Well, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, last night was just one big mistake and I'd rather just forget about it. All right. Do you remember Danny Prince? He used to live down Larson Road. Well, apparently, he owns a whole stream of taxis now. Well, the fortune is. I told you that. He's got a pink roller and all. I could have married him, you know. It's funny to think how your life might have changed if you'd have made different choices. Who knows where I'd have been now? Not stuck behind this counter, that's for sure. What can I get you? Um, I don't know, biscuits or something. I'll just have a look round. Well, I'm quite happy with the way my life's turned out. I mean, I married Gordon and he was loaded. I'm divorced and I'm loaded. But that's the difference between you and me, isn't it, Viv? I always manage to see the best in every situation. Oh, well, better get dressed, see what the day holds. <laughs> You decided yet? Just like this. Thank you. Paddy! You forgot your change. Sorry? You forgot your change. All right. You all right? Yeah, fine. That is exactly it. That's exactly what I've been waiting for. Oh, thank you, God. Yes. Can you see this here? Not really, no. Are you sure he hasn't swallowed anything? He's swallowed nothing except that dog food. Oh, whatever it is, I'm gonna have to get it out. I'm gonna have to operate, Mrs. Birch. Operate? On my battery? Well, with your permission, yeah. Um, however, about the cost. Oh, will you stop going on about the cost of everything? I'd sell my house to save him, even more. Look, if, if it's gotta be done, just do it, will you? All right, then. Well, we'll book him in for surgery this afternoon, then, Glory. Consider it done. This afternoon? Is it an emergency, then? Well, I won't know until I open him up. Open him up? Now, look, it all sounds a lot worse than it is, doesn't it, Paddy? Please, God, don't let him die. Look, just come back to the surgery around six o'clock. I'm sure everything will be fine. Yes, well, if, if it isn't, you just... You just phone me straight away. My battle is much more than just a dog to me, you know. 
He's my one reason for waking up in the morning. There's no pressure there, then. And there it was, right in front of me, like a sign from the gods. For sale. This is definitely it, Carol. This is the chance I've been waiting for. But B&B, &B, do you really want to be skiving after a load of ungrateful guests? Because let's face it, kid, that's what they're going to be. Well, you've got it wrong there, Carol. You see, I'll be going for the top end of the market, won't I? Yeah, and they're the worst type, believe you me. I know, I'm one of them. <laughs> well, I don't care how much they complain as long as they pay through the nose for it. Hope Lodge, what do you think? Or Hope House? Just think of those dishpan hands, though. The soiled sheets. The waft of cauliflower lasting at night. No, it certainly wouldn't do it for me. I'd like a word with you, madam. We'll make it quick, cos I'm in the middle of a conversation. You've no heart, you. My battle is laid up across the road because of you. We're going on about the dog food again, are we? Cos if you want to make a complaint, I suggest you go to the manufacturers. I just sell it. He's got to have an operation. Operation? He's swallowed something. Oh. Oh, well, I am sorry, Edna. I know how much that dog means to you. Yes, well... I just thought you ought to know, that's all. And whenever what's in there comes out, I am going to have it analysed, you know. I shall get to the bottom of this if it kills me. I don't know how you put up with the likes of her. Well, there's another thing. If I sell this place, I won't have to, will I? No, my days are definitely numbered behind this counter, Carol. Hello. Hiya. Hiya. Come in. Just made some coffee. Oh, great. Just what I need. Sit yourself down. Thanks. If you've come about Andy, I'm pleased to report that he did all of his homework with no complaints. Now, I would call that progress. Indeed. However, he, uh, he still wasn't at school today. Not at school? I'm afraid not. I take it you didn't know. No, I didn't. I don't believe it. I, I drove him to school myself this morning. What does he think he's playing at? What do you think you're doing? What does it look like? Did you burn that? So? Well, you shouldn't have. He's underage. Well, grow up, Emily. Shall I walk you back to the farm, Andy? Tell him to get lost. <laughs> I'm right, thanks. See? He's not being held hostage. Sitting here because he likes me. Isn't that right, Andy? Camilla. I'm not calling her Camilla. It's got connotations. What connotations? Camilla Parker, what's it? Don't you ever read the newspapers? No, if I don't have to, no. I find it depressing. Look, I, I don't like to tell tales or anything. I think you should take a look outside. Why is that then, Emily? Andy Sugden's got a pint of beer. Cain bought him it. Right, we we'll soon sort that out. I'll deal with this. I don't want you getting agitated, not in your state. Mum, be careful what you say, please. Mum's the word. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Edna. Batley's had his operation and everything's absolutely fine. I said it would be, didn't I? So what was wrong with him? Well, apparently he had swallowed something. Well, swallowed what? It's all in Paddy's notes. You can have a look at them when you take him home. But I shall be taking him home now. Oh, I'm afraid that's not possible, Edna. You see, he's still very woozy from the anaesthetic. You can take him home after the weekend. Oh. Can I see him? Of course you can. And then I want no arguments. I'm taking you for a drink. All right? <gasps> mm, why hasn't he phoned me? Because he's a man, love. All the pick and same they are. Who are we talking about, anyway? Andrew Fraser, the new stud farm manager. Oh, let's face it, love, in a job like his, you're probably just one in a long line of fillies. Mum, she's upset, all right? <gasps> Don't look now, but he's just walked in. Hiya. Oh, hello, Nicola. Mm, funny. I was just talking about you. Really? Mm. Long time no see. Well, not since Monday, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I've been meaning to give you a ring. You wouldn't believe how busy we've been, isn't that right, Virginia? Up to our eyes in it. Shall I get us a table? Yeah. What are you having? Uh, spritzer, please. See you, Nicola. Uh, pint, please, and a spritzer. So, 
How have you been? Bored. You could have phoned. I don't care how busy you were. Sorry. It's not because I didn't want to. I didn't know where I stood. I mean... You're a very attractive girl, Nicola. I'm sure you must get plenty of offers. And I'm just... Well, I'm a bit shy when it comes down to it. Oh, I never thought of you as shy. Well, now you know. I'll see you later. Can somebody bring the drinks over? Stud business. Stud business? Well, I've never heard it called that before. I'm back. Hell, yeah, what's all this for? Take your coat off, sit down. I've got something to tell you. Oh, I. Do you think they're really talking about business? Who knows? Either way, your best bet is to play it cool, love. Trust me. Since when have you ever played it cool? Precisely, and look where it's got me. No man's worth it, sweetheart. Well, nor unless he's Brad Pitt. And there's not much chance of him walking in here now, is there? But I can't just sit here and do nothing, can I? I've been thinking about him all week. And anyway, I reckon he wants me to make the first move. Really? Well, now's your chance. Right. Just go over and say hello. You've said hello. Then I'll go and say hello again. Talk about throwing herself at him. Oh, let her get on with it, Bernice. You're not a mother, you know. Look, it's a fantastic idea and it solves all our problems. And the best bit is, it means you can work part-time. But I don't want to work part-time. I like my job, Viv. Oh, so you like being away from me then, do you? No, I never said that. But yeah, being on the road, it's, it's in my blood. It's what I did. Look, I've said all this before. It's time for a change, Bob, for both of us. Look, think of it as an opportunity. This B&B could be the start of a whole chain, couldn't it? I mean, the sky's the limit and all that. Surely you find it just a teensy-weensy bit exciting? Well, yeah. Well, there you go, then. It is the right thing to do. I just know it. Now, all I've got to do is sell this place. Please, say yes. Look, if you want my opinion, you'd be better off investing in this place. I mean, it's the only corner shop for miles around here, isn't it? So, uh, you're not too keen, then, Bob? No, it's not that. It's just... I don't see the point of giving this place up for somebody else to, to take over and make a fortune, which they will, done properly. You reckon? I do, yeah. I'm in retail, remember. Then there's the post office side. Think about what you're giving up, Viv. And for what? To, to start all over again? So... So you think this place could be a good investment? Good investment? This place could be a little gold mine in the right hands. You reckon? Absolutely. <laughs> do you think I could do with a nip and a tuck? I don't know why I just don't go ahead and have the full head transplant. What's that supposed to mean? There's nothing wrong with the way you look, Mum. Yeah, well, that's a matter of opinion. You know they take your ears off. Take my ears off? Have you have a facelift? I saw it on the telly. Apparently, they take your ears off, pull all the skin back, tuck it all in and then turn back on again. And I am not having you on. If I was you, I'd just stick with what God gave you. Yes, sir. I've thought about getting a dog, you know. Have you? <gasps> Ever since Malcolm died. I mean, I know it wouldn't be quite the same, but uh, at least it would be some company. Oh, a dog, certainly that, all right. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without my Batley. There's no one in this world more important to me than he is. Not even your son? Not even my son. You see, we need each other. My son stopped needing me a long time ago. You get a dog, Gloria Weaver. It'll change your life. Well, I really must be getting along. Nice talking to you, Nicola. Yeah, likewise. Are you sure you don't want us to give you a lift home? It's on your way. No. No, it's fine. I'm fine, honestly. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Shall we have another drink? I'll get him. How's about we have a drink back at my place? Mm. Thought you'd never ask. The man's a complete chancer. It's written all over him. What on earth does she see in him, Carlos? Well, he's... He's very good-looking, I suppose. So? 
Is that what people think about these days? How you look? Whatever happened to good old-fashioned personality? Or does that count for nothing anymore? He's asked me back to his place. And there I was, thinking he didn't like me. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? Look, are you sure about this? Well, of course I'm sure. Who's she like? See ya. It's not your problem, Bernice. She knows what she's doing. I suppose so. I still think he's a jerk, though. <laughs> but what if it all goes wrong? Yeah, but what if it doesn't? It could be a new start for us. Tell him, Carol. Look, darling, I think you'll find she's made up her mind. I'm afraid you're just going to have to accept it. You see, even Carol's on my side. I'm more than on your side, sweetheart. I'm going to help you two out. What do you mean? Right. Well, it seems to me your only problem is selling this place. True? Oh, yeah, but I'll just put it on the market, won't I? Hang on a minute. Slow down a bit. What if I bought it? You! <laughs> you hate shop work. Get a manager in. Let's be honest, it's just what I've been looking for. Somewhere to invest my money and uh, a roof over my head. And what with my flair and imagination, this place could be a right little money owner, couldn't it? Well, you said it yourself. Did I? Just now. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. What do you think, Bob? <sighs> to your shop. Well, what do you say, Viv? Yes or no? I say yes! Put it there, kid. Sold as seen. Done. <laughs> <laughs>